Just gonna make a quick little video of this guy. Uh, just built it. I haven't actually flown it more than just a hover. Um, I did test the ESCs well, so I made sure that they are working well. Um, it's about 278 grams without battery or FPV equipment. Uh, this is a th like a halfway charge. You can see it's a 16 volts halfway charged uh, 1300 milliamp, and I ran out of battery straps, so I had to just use some scotch tape. <laughs> Anyways, I haven't actually flown it, so I want to see what it can do. And now I'm going to put the camera in my mouth. So it's pretty good. My line of sight skills with a camera in my mouth, not that great, but um, very powerful. This is a 4S 1300. Motors are a lot better than I expected. Um, ready to buy. Of the craft, um, just in general. So these are Multistar Elite 2300 KV motors, 2204 size. Um, this one is brand new. This one has about, I think like 10 packs through it. This one has maybe like four packs, five packs, and this one is pretty much brand new too. It might have one or two packs. This is the, uh, I mean, I just installed that one right now, as in to build this thing. Um, the frame itself is a four millimeter carbon fiber. It is very strong. I have another one built up for myself and I have not been able to break it at all. I've ran into concrete poles, whatever, 50, 60 miles per hour, does not break. Uh, very clean install. You can see this tab here. This is to plug in any F FPV equipment or um, LEDs. That goes straight to battery voltage. And this thing over here right now, these this little glued solid thing with the resistors in it, that is actually telemetry, your main battery pack telemetry to the um, D4R2 receiver, which goes to the Tyrannus, and if you just calibrate your Tyrannus real quick, which is real simple to do, I can just tell you the numbers, um, you get perfect voltage reading straight telemetry to your Tyrannus, which is awesome, and it's far better than any crappy OSD that never works. Uh, this is a little BEC, similar to the Pololu uh, BEC, and that thing is bulletproof, does not break. There's a general power distribution board in there. It supports um, constant current of like maybe like 60 amps and a maximum of around 100, which is more than you're probably going to be pulling, pulling on this craft. DYS uh, BL20As are the ESCs. They are carefully installed. Um, I've made sure to burn off all of the um, flux residue. They are unlikely to explode, unlikely to burn up. I have shortened all of the servo leads and they plug right into the NAS32 which is a used NAS32 but is a fantastic quality board that I got from uh, this guy, I forgot his name on Facebook, he's, he's, a, he's a builder himself as in he only builds custom crafts for people um, it's a very very good quality one, uh, it's a little dirty but it's you know fully functional and it's loaded with beta flight and it flies beautifully um, I'm actually going to reconfigure the antennas. I'm gonna, I don't like the fact that you can't take the top plate off without um, undoing this whole antenna assembly. I'm going to make put them in like um, antenna rods and slip them through this crack here all the way through like an X shape. Uh, I think I might use green. I think I have green tubing colored. Uh, that will make it much nicer and easier to work on. Um, this little bumper at the top, it doubles as the camera mount as well. So what you do is that you feed a strap through the front and up through these holes, and depending on how, what angle you want to set your camera to, you just feed the strap through that hole. And the camera just leans on this edge, and it's at an angle. So this is the lightest, simplest camera mount you've ever seen. Uh, really good. Front bumper, very useful. Always good. Four millimeter front bumper. 
Otherwise, it's about 93 grams of carbon fiber and um, maybe like 10 grams, 12 grams of uh, 30 millimeter standoffs with aluminum screws. And uh, it's a solid craft. It's great. I mean, it's basically the same as the one I fly, except that I have um, the 2205 RCX motors on mine, which surprisingly aren't that much better than these motors. I'm, I'm impressed with these motors. I haven't used them in a while, but um, they are much better than I expected. Uh, that flight that you saw me fly was the only time that I flew it, aside from a hover in my living room, just to make sure that it works works properly. And uh, you just add your FPV equipment and, you know, fantastic racer. The top plate is three millimeters. I have a two millimeter top plate version too, but it's only one and a half grams lighter. So why bother? Just use the three millimeter. It's going to be awesomely strong. Um, frame is very rigid, solid, and there's a very thick motor protectors, as you can see in the front. These are like, like I think I put like nine millimeter, 10 millimeter from the motor bell. So it should protect the motors pretty nicely. Ready to go. Oh yeah, one other thing. The battery plug is tied on to this little tab over here, right here. And that actually makes it very robust. And the battery plug has some movement so that when the battery goes flying, it just tugs out of here re real easily. And I've also lightened the pins in here so it doesn't have a really tight fit contact. Um, it stays in fine. But if you're in a, in a crash, you actually want everything to kind of like explode apart and fly everywhere. Uh, because it just dissipates all the force and it prevents anything from breaking. So you want your battery strap to break and you want your battery to go flying, which is why I don't have any more battery straps. Um, this plug is the best placement and design that I could come up with. It's the same way that Chad uh, Noek, um, Final Glide, mounts his battery plugs. And uh, Mr. Steele, actually, I've seen it on his craft too. Um, it's probably the single best feature that I have on here. The, uh, the FPV antenna is designed to go straight out the back. That's why there's only one pole in the back, one standoff. So when you put your receiver in here, the antenna points backwards and you can zip tie it through this hole and this hole or this, these two holes and have it go straight out the back. And that is also the most efficient way to do it so that you don't have to add any pieces to your FPV equipment and you tie the antenna down so that the antenna can bend around and highly unlikely you're going to break the antenna portion but it can bend around um, but your receiver I mean your your video transmitter also can't break because it's not hard mounted it's loose so it's not going to move around really but if it needs to move around it's free to move around so it's it's I mean I've never broken anything on my craft and I crashed it so much last weekend during the races um, that's it feel free to answer any questions ask away